the Lord, family. Praise the Lord. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything. It's a good day to be alive, and we are so excited to be getting ready to go into service with all of you. My name is Anthony Brown. I am Assistant Minister of Music and Creative Director here at FBCG International. And I have the most amazing co-host with me today. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Hello, I am Jasmine Meeks. I am the director of the marketing communication department here at First Baptist. I've been here for one month. One month. And one week. And already making an amazing <laughs> impact. We're so happy to have Jasmine. Jazz, how are you feeling about service today? How are you feeling? I am so excited. I'm on a high sale from last week, and we're going to see that in a second. But I am excited to be here because we have some special guests. We do. We got some guests coming and everything. But first, we're welcoming all of you who are in the chat. In fact, let us know where you're watching from. We got to know. I'm repping on Baltimore. So all the Baltimore folks, happy to see y'all on the chat, Jazz. Who you repping? I'm repping Chicago, Chicago. Midwest. Chicago. <laughs> We're from Baltimore, Chicago. Where are you watching from this morning? We just got to know because we want to shout you out. Our chat host in the chat, show you some love. Like Jazz said, we got an amazing service coming up, but we can't talk about that one yet. Let's take a moment and look at <coughs> the cartwheel of praise, I think we're going to call yeah, the it. The cartwheel that, that shocked heaven. That shocked heaven. <laughs> Let's run it back. <laughs> With all that you've gone through, that he sees enough in you to say to the devil, have you considered my boy? Have you considered my girl? In other words, he knows that he's put enough in me, down inside of me, that I'm able to take a licking and keep on ticking. I can go through hell and still give God the glory. I do no cartwheel either. And it's all right. Because <laughs> if you know what he came through, if you knew that he was struck out on drugs, stealing cars and vehicles from the church, and God delivered him and gave him a job back at the church. <laughs> I'm still here. Come on, say it in the chat. Man. If you still here. I've been singing that all week. Oh, my goodness. That I'm song still just came here. out of nowhere. It's because our pastor was just on fire last Sunday. Ooh, it was so good. I mean, make one do a cartwheel. It was so as we good. saw. <laughs> Jazz, yeah. they're already chiming in, in the chat, too. We got folks watching from Mississippi. Ooh, all right. From That's Georgia. Where folks are from Mississippi. They are? Mm hmm. Mississippi in the house. Georgia's in the house. Who else in the house, Jazz? We got South Carolina, Michigan, Illinois. Shout out to my parents who are watching. Ooh. I love y'all. Texas, South Carolina, Louisiana's in the house. Low rider. Let's go. We got Ohio, Connecticut, and California. And that's just in the States. We got Kenya, Belize, Argentina. Woo! Nigeria, Jamaica, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Y'all are ready for church, and guess what? We're ready for it, too, because we got special guests today. We have some special guests. Very yeah. special. Chicago representing, because our brother and friend, Vashon Mitchell, is in the house to bless us with music. So exciting. Yeah, I wonder if he bought a little mild sauce for me. Some a little Garrett's mild popcorn. sauce, some Garrett's popcorn. Come on, Chicago. <laughs> and then we're going to have a dynamic word today by Pastor Michael Henderson from New Beginnings Church. I am sure that the word of God is going to bless you today. That's why you're here. So please, by all means... Don't sit back, sit up, grab your family, share the link, because it's time to go to church. Jazz, you want to pray real link. quick? Absolutely. God, we thank you so much for this time that we have together. We pray that you are blessed this service, bless every single person watching, bless the messenger, God, and bless our psalmist today. We love you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go ahead, share the link, and share get it. ready. We're going to church. 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Did anybody come to bless his holy name today? Hallelujah. Did you bring your best praise? Your best praise today. Right now is the perfect opportunity to give him a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship and adore you, Jesus. We adore your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't you put your hands together this morning? We come to bless the Lord today.
bless that name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We count it a privilege and an honor to worship before your throne, Lord. You alone are worthy. Only you, Father. So right now, Lord, we lift our hands in worship. We lift our hands, Father, in surrender to you. We worship you, Jesus. We adore you, Lord. All the saints and angels, they bow before your throne. And all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing, you are worthy of it all. Yeah. You are worthy of it all. Yes, Lord, for from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy, you are worthy of it all.
worthy to be praised. Yes, 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 he's worthy. He woke us up this morning, started us on my way. My grandmama would say, he, he picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy. Good morning, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden International. Please take your seats if you can. I'm Minister Glenn Greer, and it's an honor to serve you this morning for this worship service. I want to welcome each of you to service this day, today. I want to give special greetings to our online worshipers, wherever you're worshiping with us from. Go ahead and let us know that in the chat. Go ahead and drop in where you're worshiping with us from. Now, family, let's read our scripture. Today, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 18, I mean, correction, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 30. And we're reading through from the New Living Translation, from the New Living Translation. I know we normally have our New King James, but today is New Living Translation. And it reads as such. The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God is the wisdom, since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom. He has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from the heavens, and it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say, it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. The foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest human plans. God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and use them to bring nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin and he freed us from sin. Amen. Amen. We're now at a time to greet our guests. So if you're a first time guest worshiping with us online, first time guest worshiping with us online, right after we pray, we're going to greet you. God bless friends who help you. Let's pray, family. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for confounding the wise, dear God. We thank you for being our strength and our salvation. For God, you are truly worthy of all our praise. And God, we know and we feel you here already, dear God, and we ask you to have your way in this place today, dear God. 
bless our speaker and, and everyone who's involved in making this experience what it should be. And bless our time together, Father. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. So as I was saying, at this time we'd like to greet our guests. We are so excited you're worshiping with us here today at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, where, we're develop where we are developing dynamic disciples through discipleship, discipline, and duplication. To learn more about our information, there's going to be a QR code that pops up for you. You can scan that QR code, and it'll, it'll take you to a site that'll give you all tons of information about our church. You can get to know us better. Also, if, if you're joining us online and you're a first-time guest, please also let us know you're joining us for the first time by typing a one in the chat so we can greet you in our virtual sanctuary. Now, for all our guests who are here for the first time with us in the sanctuary, I'm gonna ask you if you would please stand for me and remain standing. All of our first time guests here in the sanctuary, come on, amen, let's encourage them. Amen, amen. On behalf of our pastor, our first lady, our, our elders and the leaders of our church, we wanna welcome you to enjoy the service and come again and visit us. We are one church serving one God and moving in one direction forward. Amen, yeah, let's celebrate that. Now family, let's greet our guests as we greet one another. We are the church, this is the hour for the kingdom. No greater time to shine our light for the king. What a privilege, what a privilege and, an honor, and an honor just to serve, just to serve him, him. To make his praise glorious to every living thing. And we won't stop now, no. And we can't stop now, no. So let's shout it out loud. FBCG's Back to School Rally is this Saturday, August 19th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time at the Ministry Center. Come and enjoy a day filled with food, fun, games, and music, and more for the whole family. We'll be giving away backpacks and supplies to support our young learners on their journey to success. That's this Saturday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time at the Ministry Center. Are you looking for a way to grow your understanding and how to walk in God's will with your life every day? Are you seeking opportunities to connect with other believers? We have good news. The Institute's fall registration is now open. Classes are offered to help you walk in faith and apply biblical knowledge in every area of your life. Check out some of our classes. Alpha covers the basic principles of Christianity in a relaxed, engaging environment. How to Study the Bible walks you through effective ways to study the Bible. Enjoy a hands-on approach to learning and lively class discussions. 
For more information and to see other classes being offered, visit fbcglenarden.org slash the institutes to register. Here's your chance to walk through the Bible and learn the storyline of the Old Testament, the major people, places, and events as you journey through the 39 books of the Old Testament in a fun and engaging learning atmosphere. At the completion of this event, you'll be able to recite back the entire storyline of the Old Testament in three minutes or less. Bring the whole family and your friends and expand your knowledge of God's Word. Simultaneously with the adult session, there'll be a special children's session for ages 5 to 12. This two-day event is Friday, September 22nd, 7 to 9 p.m., and Saturday the 23rd from 8 a.m. till noon at the Worship Center. Registration deadline is Sunday, September 17th. For more information and registration, visit fbcglenarden.org slash WTB. FBCG is returning to three services September 17th, and now it's time for you to choose your service. Whichever service you choose, we want to see you Sunday, September 17th, as we return to three worship services. Ladies, are you ready to embrace the beauty of God's promises? Dive deep into the transformative promises of God at the He Loves Me Conference on October 5th through 7th online and in person at the FBCG Worship Center. You'll hear from powerful women of God, including C.C. Winans, Dr. Kalita Forbes, Dr. Sharita Lyons, Dr. Jazz Scullark, Pastor Cheryl Brady, and more. Experience God's God's immeasurable love for you and confidently know the promises of God at the He Loves Me conference. Registration is open for both in-person and virtual attendance. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these events and others on our church website at fbcglenarden.org. Amen. Amen. Family, I want you to keep those announcements in mind for the things that are happening here at the church. But now it's time for our tithes and offering. First of all, I want to thank you for being such wonderful, obedient givers. It's done amazing things. It's allowed us to do so much, uh, both, both domestically and internationally. We want to ask you to continue to follow in that vein. There are several ways you can give. You can give online. We're going to fbcglenarden.org forward slash give. You can also give in person. So if you're here, you can write a check. There should be envelopes in the seat back pocket in front of you. If not in front of you, tap your neighbor, get an envelope. You can put it there, and there's receptacles at the doors as you leave the sanctuary. There's also multiple, as we talked about giving, options online for you to give. You can also even mail your gift in. That still works. You can mail your gift in, and we'll get it. Amen? All right, that'll catch up to some of y'all later. All right, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for these gifts we are giving in obedience to you. Dear God, we ask that you would bless it, press it down, shake it together, and run it over. Help, them, help it to be all that you would have it to be to support, to grow your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden family. That deserves more than a hand clap. It's a, it's a call, it's a command. Praise the Lord, First praise Baptist Church of Glen Arden International. Praise, praise the Lord, online family, praise the Lord. In fact, the Bible says, let everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Anybody come with a praise on your lips today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And family, listen, we just happen to be at a place where God favors this house. Isn't it nice to go to a church where God's favor is resting? Hallelujah. The favor of God rests on our pastor, Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. And Pastor Jenkins makes sure whenever he's not around that we get fed real good. For our music today, we got a special guest. The special guest is no stranger to our church, but his songs have been the soundtrack to some of your most trying moments. 
We've sung his songs out here. Because you know what First Baptist, when Pastor Jenkins likes a song, we do it until there's nothing left. What do he say, squeeze all the juice? So we have squoze the juice out of nobody greater, squoze the juice out of turning around for me. But this guy's songs have been the soundtrack to the church for so long. And I want y'all to make him feel welcome because he's here today with us. Let's give a humongous First Baptist Church of Glenarden welcome to our musical guest, Vershawn Mitchell! Well, praise the Lord, First Baptist. I honor Pastor Jenkins and his wife in their absence to the guest preacher. But we just came to praise the Lord today in the little time I have. Any worshipers in the room, any worshipers online, let's jump into this real quick. Nobody greater than you. My God. Let's sing this together. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, and I still couldn't find nobody. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater, no. There's nobody greater than you, no. And nobody can heal like you can. Oh, most holy one, you are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways and mighty is your hand, God. Thank you, Father. You are he who carried out redemption's plan. You are he who carried out redemption's plan. I searched all over. Searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't. Still couldn't find nobody. My God, there's nobody great. There's nobody greater than no, us Nobody greater than you If you don't mind singing it with us today Lift your hands in the room and Say nobody greater no. nobody greater. That's it, come on no. nobody, greater. nobody greater Nobody greater than you Now we don't have much time Let's worship in here Say so there's nobody, nobody, nobody Nobody greater Nobody greater Nobody greater Nobody greater than you Nobody 
And it won't always be like this The Lord will perfect that concerning me And sooner or later will turn in my I believe it, I said sooner or later It will turn in my turn in It's turning around for me. And God told me to let you know that you will see the goodness. You will see the goodness of the Lord. Anybody ready for it? You will see the goodness. My God today, you will see the goodness of the Lord. The Bible says, while you live, you've waited patiently and wondered when will it be. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And you will see the goodness. Get ready to see it today. You will see the goodness of the Lord. God made a promise. You will see the goodness. Ah, and he's gonna complete his word that you will see the goodness. You will see the goodness of the Lord. While you live. I'm going to talk to you on this side. So live, just live. I know you will live until you see it. Live, just live. Just live. Tell your neighbor, you're going to live. You're going to live until you see it. Goodness. goodness. Now make a declaration and say, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Coming my way. Coming my way. I prayed for Good it. Things are coming my and I'm gonna live. I'm gonna live Said it's coming my, it. coming my way. Everything I desire. My way. Everything I've been waiting for. Coming my way. Said it's coming my way. Coming my Can way. I get a witness today? Say it's coming my way. It's coming my way. Coming my way. It's coming my way. I need it now. It's coming. It's coming my way. Said it's coming.
I will see the goodness. Oh God, oh God, oh God. I'm living to see it. I will see the good. see the goodness while we live. Amen. Now, family, it's time for the word. We have an amazing speaker in the house. Please turn your attention to the IMAGs, and immediately following that, we will hear from our guests. Dr. Michael O. Henderson, Sr. has a unique teaching and preaching style that not only engages the listener, but challenges the listener to make significant and lasting personal life changes. He is the senior pastor of New Beginnings Community Church located in Matthews, North Carolina, who founded the church in 1999, along with his wife, Reverend Tuana Henderson, and only 12 members. Throughout his faithful leadership, the church has grown to over 8,000 members. Dr. Henderson is a native of Akron, Ohio, where he began his ministry work as a ministerial staff person at the House of the Lord serving for 10 years. While there, he completed his training. He earned his Bachelor of Arts in Communication and Theology at the International Bible Institute and Seminary in Orlando, Florida. He is also a graduate of the Ashland Theological Seminary, Ashland, Ohio, with a Master of Arts in Church Administration and Counseling. In October of 2009, Pastor Henderson received an Honorary Doctorate of Divinity from St. Thomas Christian College in Jacksonville, Florida. He earned a Master of Art degree in Organizational Change in Ministry and Leadership from Wheaton College in 2023. Dr. Henderson is a committed husband, father, and faithful spiritual leader. He's advancing the kingdom of God in a fresh and inviting way. First Baptist, let's welcome Dr. Michael L. Henderson, Sr. Come on, let's give our God praise. Come on, let's, let's lift our voice in the sanctuary and let's bless the name of our Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to that name and they are safe. Come on and magnify the Lord with me. Come on everybody, let's exalt his name. Ah, together. Amen, amen, amen. What an amazing music ministry. Thank you, Vashon. You are a vessel. And you may be seated. I just want to say it's a, it's a pleasure to be back at the first, the first Baptist church of Glen Arden, Maryland. Listen, your pastor is one of my dearest friends and also my covering. There is so much favor on the life of your pastor. Let me, let me just give you an example of that. Almost 30 years ago, I introduced him to a movement of churches called, back then, the Baptist General Conference. It is now called Converge. Your pastor came in wanting nothing, just wanting to be a help. And listen to me, the, for the first time in 170 years, we have an African-American president. Oh, come on and give God praise. Uh, I'm so excited about that. I, 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 I don't know what to do. I'm one of the vice presidents and I get a chance to see him in action. And it's just a, a blessing to, to First Lady and her absence to the First Family, to the elders, to the leaders. Man, it's good to be back home.
And to those of you who are friends of this ministry, I've got to, got to, I got to do a lot in a little bit of time. So you know how pastor is. He likes things on time, doesn't he? Amen. And so I'm going to ask us to do something. I, I'm going to ask us to stand and I'm going to act like uh, just for a minute, I'm at New Beginnings. And I want us to read a text of scripture that, that just blew my mind. And it is in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Now, I know you all are New King James or King James, but today I'm going to ask you to, to uh, go with me to the New Living Translation just for the emphasis of this text today. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, and it reads, The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is very powerful of God. As the scripture says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligence. So where does this leave the philosophers and the scholars and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him, watch this, through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for sign, signs from heaven, and it is foolish to the Greek who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended. The Gentiles say that's all nonsense. But to those of us who are called by God to salvation, both Jew and Gentile, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans, and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you, now listen closely to this, few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. I know you in PG, Prince, Prince George, excuse me, county, but few of us were all that. <laughs> Instead, verse 27, God chose things that the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. Uh, and he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are the so-called powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. And as a result, no one ever can, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus for our benefit. God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure, holy, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to, to boast, boast only in the Lord. God's word be blessed. I want to talk to his family from this subject. I choose foolishness. The foolishness of God versus the wisdom of man. I choose foolish. Can I pray first before you sit down? Let me pray. Let me pray. Father, these few moments that we have, would you do something? Intercept, intervene. Move in this place. Speak to us. Oh, God. God to the end that we would have heard from you. Save, seal, deliver, set free, and add to the body. And we will give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor, and all the people of God together said, amen. Now, before you sit down, do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just don't know. 
that's the, you may be seated in this presence. That's it. That's it. You know, that's sometimes the hardest thing to get people to acknowledge and admit. I, I, I just don't know. I don't know why God chose me. I don't know why God, out of all the people he could have chosen, why would he choose me? I, I don't know why God favored me. I don't know why God, through 40 and two generations, sent his son to me. I don't know why God decided that I was worth salvaging because of all the things that I've been through. And no, you don't need to know everything. But the one thing you can know is I realize I don't know. I, I don't know why. Years ago, there was a song, songwriter, Andre Crouch. Anybody remember him? He's, he wrote a song, I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't even know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad he did. The conundrum that we are dealing with in the spiritual life is that we are caught between two worlds, the natural world and the spirit world. The challenge for most people, including believers, is our introduction to life. It came through the natural world, and we were all orientated with the natural principles of life. We've matriculated through life learning some of these natural principles, and we have all had to had to go through life re relying on the natural processes of life in the natural world so that we deal in a sense world, a soulish world, if you will. And it is a world in which most of us are comfortable in, but there is, there is, there is, there is a challenge because when we look at life, we are educated in the universities, we learn philosophy, we learn science, we learn anthropology, we learn all of these things, and yet we, 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 and we are proud, and many of us have multiple degrees, but when we come to Jesus, we have to operate in a different world. I'm going to get there. And some of us, the biggest thing, that the biggest the, the, the biggest weakness that we have is we've been too educated in the things of this world. The Bible says that the natural man does not understand, comprehend the things of the Spirit. This very Paul said that because when you try to get to God in the natural, it, God makes absolutely no sense. It is absolutely, unequivocally, unapologetically foolish to most of us who are trying to get our finite minds to understand an infinite God. And if you ever, if you ever can figure God out, then you, he will cease to be God. And some of y'all, just like me, need to go on and acknowledge that every time you think God, you got God figured out, God will turn around and do something totally different, and he will blow your mind and mine. So Paul is writing this letter to the church at Corinth. Now, I call it a church gone wild because this church, this church has been planted by Paul or started by Paul, initiated by Paul on one of his three missionary journeys. It's not an older church. It's a young church at the time of the writing, and Paul is trying to get this church to understand something. This church is trying to approach spiritual things with a natural mind. And Paul begins to explain to this church because they were boasting now that they had all the spiritual gifts and they had these debaters and they had all of this commerce and this church was boasting and yet this church, as the kids would say, was a hot mess. A hot mess. And so Paul is writing a letter of correction. Can you say correction? I want you to hear me. He is writing a letter of correction because he's trying to get people who are supposed to be operating spiritually, he is trying to get them to operate, oper they're operating naturally. He is trying to get them to leave their natural mind and to enter into a spirit world. Y'all know how, how it is. It's hard sometimes when you are so accustomed to certain things, but God's spirit works different than, than, than the natural philosophies of man. And during the time of the writing of this particular book, Paul is dealing with Greeks and Jews. 
Jews who are seeking a sign, Greeks who are the philosophers, they had wisdom was their thing. And so they thought that they knew everything and they had these debaters that would show up and they would argue on behalf of different, watch this now, different leaders in the church. And some would say, I'm of Apollos. Some would say, I'm of Paul. Some would say, I'm of Cephas. And some would even say, I'm so deep, I just hear from Jesus. You, you, y- y'all don't have them deep people here at First Baptist, but at, at New Beginnings, I got folk all the time tell me, I don't believe in man. I just want to hear straight from God. So they don't follow no man rules. Now, I tell them this, watch this now. You follow rules because when you go out there and you, there is a light, a, a traffic light, guess what you do? You following a man's rules. But for some reason, we feel as though we don't have to follow authority. And I need to talk to somebody in here today. I believe that, that we've got to stop looking at things in the natural and understand that God has certain principles in the spirit realm that he wants to, he wants us to get. And so Paul is writing to this church gone wild and he's writing to this, he's writing this letter and y'all this letter is really something else because in the first chapter of 1 Corinthians he talks to them about the vision because they are divided. The second chapter he talks to them about being spiritual because they're trying to uh, occupy spiritual offices in the natural mind. In the third chapter he talks to them about watch this now, being divided by personalities of Paul, Peter, uh, 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 Jesus. He says, wait a minute now, everybody got to have their personality before they can hear the word of God. Are you really looking for the word of God? Because if you're looking for the word of God, it doesn't matter who's bringing it as long as it's the word. Chapter four, he talks to them, watch this now. In chapter four, he talks to them about employing their, their, imploring their gifts that you don't get saved to sit, you get saved to serve. And chapter five, he talks to them about immorality of the church. He said, don't you understand that a man is sleeping with his father's uh, a wife and y'all don't even do anything about it? I've already judged it. Chapter six, he's talking to them about going, taking, taking, watch this, spiritual things to a secular court court system. Don't you understand that you're going to judge the world? You're going to judge angels? How is it that you're going to take something spiritual to a natural world? Chapter 7, he talks to them about being, being satisfied because he had, just like us today, he had single f- people who couldn't wait to get married. He had married people who couldn't wait to get single. He said, abide in your own gift. In chapter 8, he deals with this thing called liberty because a lot of us are are free in Christ. And so he says, don't use your liberty as, watch this, as an opportunity to be disobedient because if you're not using your liberty to serve the kingdom, your liberty is in vain. Chapter 9, he talks to them about, about running away, running the race in such a way that you and I I might win, not, not beat in the air, but that we are purposefully running. He said in chapter 10, those of us who are under steep attack and temptation, he says, I got news for you. There's no temptation that's taken you, but such is common unto man, and God is faithful. He will not allow you and me to be tempted above what we are able, but with that temptation. Somebody say, with the temptation. He'll make a way of escape so that we can endure. In chapter 11, he talks to the people about headship. Oh, this is really deep. He says in chapter 11, he says, wait a minute, the head of every man is Christ. And then the head of every woman, I figured it'd get quiet on that. In chapter 12, he talks to them, listen, in chapter 12, he talks to them about gifts. I don't care how many gifts you have. If you don't have fruit, your gift don't mean a thing. And chapter 13, he says, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and I do not have love, it profits me nothing. How is it that you can speak to God in 10,000 tongues and can't say hi to me in one? Chapter 14, he talks about divine order in the church because churches are going wild. In chapter 15, he talks to them about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then in that final chapter, he talks to them about giving. Because saved folk ought to be the greatest givers in the world. 
Now, real, real quick, he is dealing with a mindset, a Greek philosopher mindset and a Jewish religious mindset. And they're trying to understand what makes Paul so special. And Paul is pretty much telling them, watch this now, because you look at preaching the gospel as foolish. Watch this. But here's what Paul says. First of all, he says, I just simply believe what I do not understand. Somebody say, I don't understand it. Now, can I, can, I, can I tell you the greatest compliment you can give to your God and people? People are talking to us all the time about the fact that we believe in y'all, y'all, you need Christianity as a crutch. Let me tell you what he says. So, 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 look, so, so, so look, at verse, look at verse 20 and 21. Look at what he says. This is really good. He says in verse 20, 21, he says this. So where does it lead the philosophers and the scholars and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him why, how through human wisdom he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. Simply believe what I don't understand. I don't understand how salvation works. Oh, I, I know you deeper than I am. I don't understand how salvation works. How is it that I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth and my life is fully changed? I don't understand that. Matter of fact, Matter of fact, if you say you understand that, you're trying to be super spiritual. That's what the, that's what the, that's what the theologians call the mystery on. There's a mystery in the gospel that we have to be comfortable with. There's some things that you and I simply don't have to understand in order to believe it. Watch this. You don't understand how gravity wor works, but you fly. Your pastor is a pilot, and I go flying with him sometimes. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> now, he don't have one of them big, 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 big planes. He has, you know. So I get in there, and I know it's gravity. But I don't always understand. And every now and then we'll hit a pocket of air and the plane will go. <laughs> and I say, God, I don't understand. <laughs> let, let me tell you what this, he says, where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? And let me tell you what he's, what he's talking about because what you've got to understand something. They, the Greeks put a whole lot of emphasis on Sophia. That's wisdom. And they thought we need to be able to explain the nuances of, of faith. And so they got caught up in trying to be deep philosophically and not realize that the Watch this, the spirit world doesn't work by our human intellect. The spirit world works by us, by faith, walking in his spirit. Okay, let me see if I can, let me see if I can make this plain. Somebody in here today, you didn't understand the last trial that you went through. You were saying, oh Lord, remember Fred Sanford, this is the big one, Elizabeth. This is the big one. Some of us were saying that, and you didn't understand how you were going to get through it. But the one thing you did know is that you couldn't do it. And every now and then, God will allow something to happen in our lives that we don't have the ability to get ourselves out of. I believe that God is allowing that because he's trying to get us to understand this is bigger than your ability to manipulate it, comprehend it, to do anything about it. But if you just get out the way. Do me a favor. I feel like I want to preach right now. Give me a little more of my monitors. Here's what I need you to understand. That God is not letting you go through stuff, difficult stuff, just so that he can shake you up. God's letting you go through difficult stuff so you can know you are you and he is God. Oh, come on, somebody get here and give God some glory. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you only knew what I've been through, you would be shouting too. Because when I think about everything that God has brought me through. How 
many are living places you didn't know how you got there? How many of you got stuff you don't know how you got it? How many of you are in, ended up in positions that you didn't earn? How many of you matriculated through school and you said, Lord, I need your help? Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost now. Can I get about three of y'all who don't mind looking foolish? I need you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, you looking at a miracle. Because in order for me to be here today, God showed up. Do me a favor, are y'all touching yet? Get your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I need you to understand. The reason I shout the way I shout, I praise the way I praise, I jump the way I jump. I don't understand it. I simply believe it. Who in here is going through hell? Raise your hand. Here's what I need you to know. That the devil can only do what God allows. Come here, Joel. Did you know that Job's name was called out by God? The devil went to God and said, hey, I can't really find nobody who's on the earth who's really going to be faithful to you. And God said, have you considered Job? Here's what I need you to hear, First Baptist. The fact that God has trusted you with that struggle says that he believes in you. And more importantly, he believes and what he put inside of you. I don't have, I don't have much time, so, so y'all, I'm going to cut through the, through the line here. But let, let me say this. Let me say this because I want to talk to somebody in here who today you feel like uh, God don't care. I need you to understand. Stop trying to figure it out. Okay. All right. Okay, 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 let, let me give you this. When I was about five, six years old, I watched, I was obsessed with swimming. I watched swimming on television every day. I watched swimming, I watched them backstroke, butterfly, float. I watched them do the side stroke, I watched it all. I was only five or six years old. And in the, in the mind of a five or six year older, here's what I thought. I thought that if I watched swimming, I could swim. Okay, I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Stay with me. So there was a local pool in my community. So here's what I did, y'all. I went to the local pool, and I had a problem at, at five or six years old because I saw people over there in the shallow. Why even show up? I saw people over there, watch this, I saw people over there with just their feet in the pool. Why waste your time? Here I am, five, six years old, guess what? I didn't understand swimming, I had watched it, so guess what I did? I dived in the deep. You gonna get it in a minute. I, as they say, I near about drowned. The lifeguard pulled me out. He says, what were you thinking? I said, I wasn't thinking. I thought I could swim. The problem with a lot of believers is we think we believe it. We hear preaching. We hear teaching. We, but we ain't really believe it. Because if you believe, you got to get in there. Oh, somebody in here, you ready to swim? Would you go on and give God a swim praise? I'm not testing this thing out. I know it's real. Here's the problem. 
the Jews sought a sign. There's no sign or human wisdom that could do for you and me what he did. Uh, the Jews were like, you know when Jesus walked the face of the earth, here's what they said. Y'all, and I'm skipping around. Please, please understand. Here's what they said. Uh, if you Christ, show us a sign. That's not how the spirit world works. Some of y'all have been coming to First Baptist for weeks, months, some of you even years. You've been coming, but it's not going to work for you until you dive in. You know what me diving in did for me? It caused me to learn how to swim. You might not understand everything, but when you dive in, you put yourself in a position to trust God. The, uh, the Greeks seek wisdom. And, 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 and listen, there, there were signs they sought, and then... And then they, they just wanted to understand how God worked from the flesh. Now, there are two words I want you to learn. The first is called sukikos. Sukikos. That's a Greek word that means soulish. Soulish has to do with my intellect, my emotion, and my will. Now, that's all of us have a sukikos. Now, there's a second Greek word. It's called sark. Sark. That word means flesh. Now, there's a, another Greek word called pneuma. That is spirit. Now, let me tell you how this works. When you become born again, the spirit of God connects with your spirit and brings you life. So all of a sudden, your human sukikos starts changing. So then your flesh starts reacting. So that if you did things and you had no power to stop, once the pneuma came in your life, you had power to say no. Uh, okay, all right, all right, I got to go. Here it is, here it is. You don't think God can do it. How do you know what I think? Because if you thought God could do it, you would let him do it. Because you operating in sukikos and sark. But you have to yield to the pneuma. That's where human wisdom can explain what happens to you and me. Let me tell you something, and I, I'm going to end on this. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, the, the, the Greeks were these f philosophers and they had all of this wisdom and they, they had these gods, uh, Apollos and, and Athena and, um, and all of these gods. They also, had, they also had this god called Aphrodite. This was a sex goddess. Now, let me tell you how crazy we can get in our human wisdom. Uh, they, this sex goddess, watch me now, they believed that this god would bring them fortune. So, Aphrodite, uh, they would, there was a temple on the hill right, out, right outside of Corinth, and Aphrodite, here's what Aphrodite would do. Af 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 the, the, the goddess Aphrodite commissioned 1,000 temple prostitutes. 1,000. Here's how the, these wise men, here's what they thought. They thought that if I, if I want to get the powers of the gods, then I have intimacy with these prostitutes that would make me have a worship experience. Okay, let, let me see if I can bring that home. I, I, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I, I cause it to come out. Uh, th th this, this word is going to go forth, come hell or high water. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. I command it in Jesus' name to sit down.
Now, now watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says that these men, these, the most intelligent men in the world, the most intelligent men in the world, here's what they would do. They would have these, these priestesses, if you will, they would have them come down into the city, a thousand of them, and the way they got this elite knowledge is they would have sexual intimacy. Now, don't you think that's foolish? Okay, okay, let me see if I can bring it home to where we are. The most powerful office house in the world is right there in D.C. Here it is, here it is. Hedonism. It's, it's the worship of knowledge and pleasure. And we got people in high places in this nation who think they're so smart and they're so intelligent that the law doesn't apply to them. Uh, let me bring it home. Let me bring it home. So I tell people all the time, anytime you have these secret societies, you got to have 34 degrees of knowledge. I, I rebuke that spirit of witchcraft, which is a spirit of control. And here's what Jesus says, whosoever will. So, so let me go, let me go, let me go. So here's, here's what I need you to hear, and I'm done. We can't come to God in our own natural wisdom. As a matter of fact, Paul says, none of us or very few of us were noble or wise or accomplished. God didn't choose us because we were all that. Y'all ain't hearing me. God chose you because he saw somebody that he could put his spirit in and they would give God the glory. Now I dare you to take about 30 seconds and thank. Oh, everybody standing, everybody standing. Everybody standing, come on, thank God that our glory is the Lord. Okay, all right, listen, listen, listen. Real quick, I need, to, I need the intercessors to start praying because here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call for what we normally call for, but here's, here's a call that the Holy Spirit told me to call for too. Trust me when I say he speaks. I need people today. I'm gonna pray in a minute, and then we're gonna, make, we're gonna do our regular call, but I need people today that you've struggled with your qualifications, your self-identity, your, your, watch this, your ability to be where you are, you constantly challenging that. God, why, I don't feel like I belong. I need you to understand the Lord's going to deliver you today from you. Because you're trying to understand God through your human wisdom. That's not going to work. God has you strategically positioned and planned it where he wants you. So I'm going to pray, and I want everybody who is unsaved, stop trying to figure it out, step, through, step forward by faith. Unsure. I need to be certain of my faith. Watch this. Backslidden. I, I used to be there, but I'm not there anymore, or I need a church, and you don't have a church. This is one of the best churches in the nation. Now, I'm going to pray, and I want you to start moving when I pray. I think the music uh, team is going to help me, but I want to pray, and I want, and, I, and I, I especially, I want all of those categories, but in addition to that, I want people who are struggling with your identity. You just don't feel like you fit, like you belong. God's going to free you today. Father, we pray now that you would free people. Yes, God, free people. Oh, God, save, heal, deliver, set free, add to the body. 
we'll give your name praise. God, we know that you want to do something here. And so, Lord, I pray against distraction and human wisdom. I pray, God, that you would give understanding and clarity as people are coming to this altar in Jesus' name. Now, heads bowed. Those of you who know that you, come on, you stand. You fall in one of those four categories. Come on. I'm unchurched, unsaved, unsure. Watch this. I got issues with my identity. Come on. I need you to come. They're coming. Come on. I need you to come. I need you to come. I need you to come. I need, I don't care what other people have said. I need you to come. I need you to come. I need you to come. Come on. Come on. Even in the balcony, I need you to come. Come on. 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 I don't feel like I belong. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, no, uh-uh, come on. God's calling you today. God's calling you today. Come on, they're still coming, y'all. Keep praising, they're still coming. Come on, keep praising, they're still coming. Come on, come on, I'm waiting, we're waiting, come on. They're still coming, they're still coming. Come on, come on, come on, we're waiting on you. Come on, come on, we're waiting, they're coming. We're waiting, they're coming. Come on, they're still coming, come on. Come on, you got to jump in. You got to jump in. You got to jump in. Stop waiting. Come on. They're coming. That's right. Come on. They're coming. That's right. Come on. Come on. They're coming. That's right. Come on. Oh, they're coming, they're coming. First Baptist, give God praise. We're going to pray and then I'm going to have the officers come and they're going to walk you through what you need to do. I'm going to pray over them and then y'all come and walk her through. Thank you, presider, today. I appreciate you, man. You've done a great job. Listen, 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 listen. Here's what I need you to understand, those of you at this altar. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't, you can't comprehend this up here. God's doing something that is called the mystion in your life. It's a mystery. You, you may not ever totally get it here, but you know something happening right here. Yeah. Father, I pray over these that have come by way of, of salvation, rededication, getting security, joining the church and identity, that you would do something in their lives today and that they would not leave here the same. In Jesus' name. Come on, presider. Give God praise. Praise God. Praise God. The heavens are rejoicing because of you. The heavens are rejoicing because of you. Amen. Now, family, standing behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you in the back, and they're going to spend a little time and talk with you and help you get connected in the way you need to get connected. Amen. Amen, counselors. Amen, yes indeed. Yes indeed, let's celebrate them as they depart.
Amen. Amen. First Baptist, didn't he bless our hearts today? He blessed our hearts today. We want to thank God for the man of God. If you pull it, please have your seats just for a moment. We want to thank God for the man of God. And at this time, we're going to do what we always do, First Baptist. And we're going to sow into the man of God who came and sowed into us today. Amen. You know, we have our multiple giving options. You can give by envelope and there should be one in the back. You want to write guest preacher on that and you can drop that into the, the receptacles as you depart the back. You can also go to First ba to, onto our website, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, first, fbcgglenarden.org forward slash give. And you want to select guest preacher, guest speaker to be able to, to sow into his life. Amen. All right, at this time, let us pray. So family, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us today through the person of Pastor Henderson, dear God. Father, we ask that you will refill him, pour back into him all that he has given out, dear God. And bless the offering that's being taken today. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa, I just want to forever and ever. Oh, forever, Lord. For all that you've done. Thank you, Jesus. What you've done for me. Yeah. Blessings and honor. family if you would stand to your feet as we prepare to depart we want to thank the Lord for everything he's done for us on today please keep those announcements mindful you can go to our, our website to find those announcements that were talked about today now the Lord bless and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace blessings to you God bless you all have a wonderful day Think I'll make it, think I'll make it. anyhow. Think I'll make it.
Oh my goodness! Service feeling so good and they're still jamming behind us! Oh, I think I'm making I can help myself in the house! Y'all, what a dynamic service today! That was so amazing. Pastor Michael Henderson preaching the word of God. That was amazing. amazing. And then our special guest, Rashawn Mitchell, so who's in the house with us right now. Yeah. What up, B? Oh yes, Chicago in the house. Absolutely, shot town in the house. We're taking you. over. Good to see you. I got two shot town people on my side. Baltimore representing by myself. <laughs> but Rashawn, what impactful ministry. Powerful, powerful songs. I told the congregation today, your songs have literally been the soundtrack to our Sunday service for years. So hearing these new songs, I'm just like, we're about to get where this one out to. Amen. <laughs> it was so good and it flowed perfectly oh, with the other songs. It was like everybody was ready. It didn't feel like a new song. Good. Everybody went right into it. You know what? That is my uh, goal is to just have music that will live longer than I can. Mm. You know, that people can sing forever and for years to come. And that just it becomes the backdrop of not yes. only churches, but the backdrop of life, you know. Now, that's the goodness song, though. Tell us about that one because that... That song could have lived for a little while longer. We ain't had time. We had time. That's why you gotta you gotta yeah. listen to it. Yeah, you gotta, please listen to it. Uh, um, you are a songwriter, so yes. during COVID and everything that's going on with everything, I asked God to close my ear. I didn't want to write for what we we're going through. I wanted to write how to come out of it. So when he opened it up, he took me to the scripture. You will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know, we grew up talking about the by and by. Right, you know, right. but I was so happy to see the scripture tell me that in the land of the living, I can see his goodness today. Today, now. Today, right Not now. just in the sweet by and by. Not just in the sweet by and by. Come on, Chicago. Yeah. It was so good. And and I listened to, to the songs that you have available. So yeah. the album comes out when? The album comes out August the 25th. Uh, the pre-order is now. It's three songs you can get with Ja'Kayla Carr and uh, Victory and another song. But um, uh, Donnie McClurkin is on. And see the goodness. And he's singing songs on there. Uh, I, Who is? This, Donnie McClurkin. This church music. <laughs> you got to get. This Listen. church music. You got to listen to Donnie <laughs> McClurkin. He starts speaking in tongues oh, on Oh, man. It's, it's good. She's in August 20. August 25th. It's available everywhere, wherever you stream your music, download your music. And because of the demand, we had to press CDs. So you can go to Amazon.com and order actual CD if you need My, my grandmama still want a CD. Man, she want a CD. That's why we had to. Absolutely. But Sean, but literally, not even just goodness of God, but turning around for me, nobody greater. You need to know this. We wore nobody greater completely out. We wore it out until it was somebody greater. We knew who it was. It was it was Jesus. We knew. Good. We sang it for years and years and years. When it comes to your formula as an artist, even as a minister of music yourself, what are you doing to make sure, because it feels like there's an intentional effort to make sure the church is not left out of the music that we're putting out today. Your songs, though they reach the world, speak to the church. Is there a formula behind that for you, or are you just... That's just how it comes out. You know, when I prepare for a project, even if I'm not writing everything, I try to, you know, definitely in my meditation and prayer time, reading the word, but I listen to what I call the sounds of the earth. And that's basically what the, what the earth is going through because the church is impacted by what the earth goes through. So basically, as, we, as, as I listen, I really want to make sure that I'm able to dive into the sound that God has given me that can help us deal with the sounds of the earth. That's good. I thought maybe it was a channel on YouTube or something I could listen to. <laughs> sounds of the Earth. I was like, let me take <laughs> Well, Well, the Sounds of the Earth, yeah, it's, it's, it's literally... Yeah, yeah, where is it? No, it's really, it's really what you see in the news, what people are going through, listening to conversations sometimes in, in, in the public when they're talking to children. You know, you get, you get uh, what people are going through and then the healing that they need so you can go write it. Now, we have a whole entire online community who is watching right now and some of them are going through experiences that you just spoke about, you know, where it's just like not knowing where to go. Pastor Henderson touched on it today as well in a very powerful way. Yeah. What could you say to our online community to just encourage them to push through their, their rough days right now? You know what? I'll tell you to uh, understand what my mentor told me. My mentor said, know who you are in God and your assignment on the earth. Because when you walk out your assignment, you define success and it doesn't define you. So whatever God has called you to do, be the best that. Whatever God, God called you to go, be the best that because you're defining your own success. That's it right there. That's good. Now, I do want to petition that we get a new hymnal. Uh, I, we may need to call it something else, but there are songs like Nobody Greater that are going to be sung 
for years and years to come. So I'm going to commission Anthony Brown to start that no, project. Oh we should commission goodness. Anthony Brown to do commission. We need a new hymnal, new, new hymnal. staples in the church. The new age hymnal. Yes, the new, the new age. Okay, now I got to go, go get to work now. Just give me a little publishing oh, credit. Oh, I will say give me a little publishing credit. Just a little bit. <laughs> just say, give me a little publishing credit. Just, just like listen, .5. What Deshaun just said, even what, what my amazing co-host Jasmine has been here with me to, to say to you is God is literally on your side. And uh, I think, Rashawn, what you just said, talking about uh, being defined, success being defined by you being in your passion place, in your passion space, doing what God called you to do. That's a powerful message for somebody who's listening today. Okay? Don't let the world define success for you. Get in the lane that God created for you and do what he called you to do. And that is success. Pastor Michael Henderson preached the word today. My brother Rashawn Mitchell sung us into God's space. And it's just been an amazing experience. I hope you guys have enjoyed the service as well. Remember, you can at any moment give whenever you want to, fbcglenarden.org slash give. And you can also commit and accept and give your life to Christ at any moment that you see this broadcast. We have people who are waiting yes. to encounter you and help you live out your purpose. And I also want to encourage you, we have another service coming up at 1130. Yeah. So if there's somebody that you know that needs to hear this message and needs to be encouraged by that music, you can share it now. You got enough time to, to make sure you get them on the phone and you can watch it with them. Have a watch party and join us at 1130. And Rashawn going to be back too, so don't miss that, okay? Listen, from all of us here at FBCG International, thank you so very much. On behalf of Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr., our First Lady, Trina Jenkins, and the entire team here at FBCG International, we love you so much. And guess what? You're going to see the goodness. You're going to see the goodness of the Lord this week while you live. We love you. See you next time. Amen. Bye.